At the time of my experience, I was a fourth-year student at Picardo Palma University. One morning my mother came up to my room to see me because I hadn't come down for breakfast and I had to go to the university. She found me with a fever. I told her I felt ill. She gave me a pill to lower the fever, but it didn't go down. I had the fever for two days and nothing helped me feel better. They decided to call the doctor. He came, examined me, and said I possibly had pneumonia. He gave me an injection, but the fever stayed with me all night and got up to 102.2 degrees. That night my parents heard the dishes crash in the kitchen of our house. They heard something walking around in my bedroom, but I didn't make a sound or hear anything. Well, they took me to the emergency room of the police hospital, where they gave me blood tests. The doctors came but could find nothing. They didn't know what was wrong with me. The fever went up to 104 degrees, and I began to lose weight very rapidly. I lost my appetite, and they moved me to the neurology department, where a wonderful doctor took care of me. He told me jokes. But I continued to lose weight. When the illness began, I weighed 171 pounds, but I was now down to about 77 pounds. I began losing strength and my family and friends couldn't understand anything I said. They said I just made unintelligible sounds. I became bitter because they couldn't understand me, and they gave me a pencil and paper to communicate with them. I lost so much strength that I couldn't hold the pencil. I couldn't eat by myself either, or get myself to the bathroom. I was practically an invalid. I could only move my eyes. My father worked a great distance from the capital, in the district of Maquegua, the port of Ilo, to be precise. He worked at the hospital of the American company that mined copper in Taquapala. They called him and told him I was getting worse by the day and the fever wouldn't go down from over 104 degrees. They put me in a room to die and that day I had a very strange experience. The medical supply room was about 65 feet from my room, so I don't know how I heard my father's voice as he talked with the doctor. It seemed as if they were conversing in my ear very clearly. My father began crying and asked the doctor, why is this happening to my sons since he is at the start of his life and has his whole life before him? I would prefer to die rather than my son. I have lived a long time. Tears came to my eyes. I wanted to be by his side and tell him I loved him. I felt very sick, but at the same time, I felt great love for my father. A little while later my father came into the room with a big smile. He hugged and kissed me and asked how I was doing. He said, I know you are going to get better. He didn't know I had heard the whole conversation with the doctor. I didn't want to cry and cause him pain, but the tears got the better of me. The next day they called a priest to come and give me the last rites. I groaned and wanted him to go away. It seems they understood my feelings and told him to leave. I didn't want to go to sleep because I knew if I closed my eyes I would die. In the afternoon, I tried to close my eyes and I seemed to fall into an infinite abyss. I opened my eyes and the nurse was at my side. I had urinated on myself without realizing it. This day, as a last resort, they took a spinal tap. The doctor didn't know how to insert the needle well and caused me a lot of pain and my face and hands twisted up. They called the neurologist but my father came in and smoothed out my face and hands and I was okay. They tested me by sticking needles in the soles of my feet. I reacted well. They called another neurologist to tap and I became tense because of the trauma of the first attempt. I withstood the pain. There wasn't much that time. It was about nine o'clock at night. I'm not really sure. There was a crucifix on the wall in front of my bed. I prepared to meet God and told him I couldn't take any more. My family members told me that during the last week my eyes went blank as I looked upward. I couldn't take any more and closed my eyes. I suddenly felt absorbed into a dark tunnel that carried me upward. Below me, there was what appeared to be a flaming cloth, but I was traveling at high velocity. The strange thing is I didn't collide with the walls. 
Suddenly, I saw a light that grew brighter and brighter as I slowed down and I got nearer. I closed my eyes but could see the light as well as when they were open. At first, I resisted the light out of fear and dread, but gave myself over to its power. It was as if a thousand atomic bombs exploded in front of you. Suddenly, I sensed I entered into the brightest part of the sun, and then into the least bright where I gave myself over and became part of an infinite whole. I then felt transported to a world of light, and I felt I was being carried in God's arms. The great light asked me how I felt, and I said I felt fine. All this dialogue was communicated in thoughts. My surroundings were warm and inviting like being in my mother's womb. He told me to stay, but I said, no. He then carried me to a paradise, a beautiful forest full of phosphorescent colors, yellow-blue waves. The colors were alive. I was a few feet in the air. I no longer had a body. I was pure vision. Suddenly, something like a butterfly came toward me. It wasn't a butterfly. It was a large angel. I don't know what gender it was. It was beautiful. It had large wings. It carried me into paradise for recreation. It also took me to a clear, transparent river. The truth is I didn't believe in angels at the time. Now I do. Then I appeared once again with the great light, and I could barely see some old men with beards observing me from on high. I told God I wanted to go back to take care of some things. He then took me to a kind of giant screen. My life started regressing back to my childhood, and I was aware of some faults I had. I felt like an embarrassed child full of remorse. I believe those who have serious faults must feel like they are burning. That must be hell. I don't believe in a hell that burns people because God is love, and He can't burn anybody. It is the conscience of each person that makes one feel whatever they deserve. Suddenly I opened my eyes, and I was in my hospital bed. I had the urge to pee. I pulled out the needles in my arms, the tube in my nose, and felt that my strength had returned. I tried to stand up little by little. I felt electricity in my legs. I grabbed onto the wall and left the room. Everybody in the adjoining beds were shocked and called the doctors and nurses. I wouldn't let anybody grab me. I got to the bathroom and peed all on my own. On the way back, I let them help support me. The next day, I ate gelatin without help. The doctors were amazed at my recovery. Three days later, I was almost normal except I had many dizzy spells. The diagnosis was that I had meningitis. I was unable to stand on one foot, and I was unable to pass some tests like grabbing the tip of my nose and others. After seven days, they discharged me. I told some people about my experience, and they said I was crazy. My own doctor had me get psychiatric help because I said that I spoke with God. After the experience, I would leave my body at night when I would go to sleep. I couldn't get back and it was terrible. It was a nightmare for me. But over time, and by researching what had happened to me, I began meditating and started having many experiences outside the norm. It would take a long time to relate everything. Please forgive me for all the typos. I'm writing as rapidly as I can because others are waiting for the computer. Thank you very much. If this helps anyone, I will be happy and satisfied. Note from Beyond Death. I have included the link to the original NDE for those that wish to read it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Until next time, stay blessed. Welcome to Beyond Death where we examine near-death experiences from people that say they have died, visited the other side and came back. Today's NDE is from Daniel who tells us about dying from meningitis and about meeting God and an angel in paradise and all the wonderful things he saw there. Let's get into it.